Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Note Closer Show. I am Scott Carson, your crazy ass host every day here, and we are rocking and rolling this morning. Hopefully, you're off to a great start today, and and making some things happen. But um, let me see. Let me stop the share. All right. So I am excited today have to have a good friend on here, somebody that we consider part of the, our extended family, or really kind of the inner circle family, I guess you could say, is my really great friend and a friend of the, the Carsonites, I should say, joining us live from the West Coast, Michelle Young. Good morning, Michelle. How are you doing today? Good morning. I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Get, get, get the energy rock and roll and waking mm -hmm. up singing and everything, dancing. I seriously morning. seriously, I had like the I had the miracle of the coffee pot this morning. I'm not joking. I got up early and I wanted to be like fully alive for you. And I made coffee and I had a client call just like a like out of the blue. A client called and so I had a couple cups of coffee and then I went back in the kitchen just a little bit ago to make a green smoothie and there was just as much coffee as I started with. I'm like, <laughs> oh I, I don't know what happened, but it's that's a good sign right that's a very good sign that the coffee just keeps replenishing itself <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like it's you know beautiful <laughs> well hey so for those that you don't know who you are michelle why don't you tell them a little bit about who michelle at play is huh don't mind if i do don't mind if i do so um my name is michelle pearson young i only go by that because michelle young hello everybody's named that it seems like um, I live here in the Pacific Northwest with um, my husband of uh, nearly 31 years and uh, goats. We have goats, and um, and I'm a life coach. I get to I get to live my dream every single day um, by teaching. I teach, like I said, I started at seven o'clock this morning, and I get to teach people people the principles that create a greater capacity for happiness. That's, that's the best way I have to describe it. Um, we have four children together. I have, I have done, I have this really bizarre resume from running a multi-million dollar company to, you know, uh, doing fundraisers. For the that's that's the best it. way I have to describe it. Uh, oh, my apologies. Sorry, I muted you for a second. You're, so you're what I like to joke by call Aaron our goat herder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I was out running around and we have a new grandbaby and, and uh, I was, I texted my daughter-in-law and I was like, Hey, can I come see you guys? Cause I was out running around and she's like, I'm at your house with the baby goats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so All right. what, what I love Michelle is I can actually remember walking with Aaron. Aaron was actually in town here for an event about three years ago, four years ago. We were walking down South Congress after dinner, him, me, and Steph, and he was talking about how you had asked him, say, hey, I think I'm going to go this route. I think I've got so much to share and to help people overcome some things. And I remember he was so jacked up about it, and things were rock and roll. It all started with your blog for the most part, right? And it's kind mm -hmm. of evolved from that. Um, you, you deal with so many different types of people, because I've seen you at the uh, Aaron Young's event, or Aaron's events and things like that. What is there a unifying thread throughout the people that you kind of work with that they're, they're struggling with things or do you sort of variety of different things? What do you think is the biggest kind of aha that you see with, with people struggling these days? The biggest aha with people struggling is that, that they know there's something more They're you know, they're going and they're, they're doing their thing. And, and usually my clients, the clients are like, they're ready. They're ready to make real change. What they're doing is they're like, okay, I, I decided I was going to change, you know, switch it up. And, and you see it all the time with notes, people coming in and they're like, yeah. I got a good life, but I'm ready for something more. Yep. And, and so they're, they come in and they do something like note closing and they, they want to learn from the best. And what happens, the, the unifying theme is that they're like doing the stuff. They're doing the right things and they still seem to be bumping up against a wall. And they're like, I'm, I'm doing it. What exactly is going on? And and at the risk of sounding cliche, because it really does, and I hate to sound like everybody else there, but it's really, it's your mindset. There's a script going on that you picked up along the way usually, and this is hilarious. We're a bunch of six-year-olds running the world. It's terrifying. We, we all look at Trump and we're like, he's, such a, he's a six-year-old running the world, but come on, you are too. You're six and you're running the world. <laughs> And so, so, and what happens is we, is, is people get these ideas in their head and they don't even know how wonky they are. 
And, but they keep going, I'm bumping up against a wall. And what they're doing is they're bumping up against their belief system what they really believe is possible. And so the unifying theme is that people are like, look, I'm ready to be done with this. Whatever it takes is what I'm ready to do. And that puts them in a position so that they get teachable. My, my guess is you see that exact same thing happen within, within what you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we see a lot of people hit these walls and it's just like, are they, I, I totally agree. The underlying script, the belief systems of what they can or cannot do. You know, I think Henry Ford says it said best, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're correct. That's right. And, and it's hard. And people, people go, Oh, I think I can, but they don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they don't. Mm-hmm. I, I heard our buddy Greg uh, say a word sometimes saying we believe, we, we believe, believe the lies that we, the, uh, the bullshit that we feed ourselves sometimes. Right. Yeah. I've, oh, every time. It's it's really remarkable. Like I said, I had a an unscheduled seven a.m. client this morning, and uh, and she was telling me what was going on, and I was like, okay. And I started like having her draw a graph and going, okay, this is. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's my six year old, and this is what my six year old is saying. And I'm like, yeah, that's yes, it is. Yes. So so that's that's that brings up a good point. It's kind of where we, I was going to ask you next. What are some things? I mean, obviously, I think before be, self realization that you have a problem or have an obstacle, I think is the big. Right, and, and going, yeah, what, okay, so my beliefs aren't working for me. Right. What do you have? And, and that, that like, okay, no, I'm ready to be done with this because I couldn't do it on my own. Mm-hmm. So what are some initial steps that you like to teach people? Because you know, I know you do different things with different people, depending on where they're at. Right. But is there, there something that if, and I, I encourage everybody that's watching this right now, if you've got a question, write it in the comments. We'll Absolutely. get to it. We, we want this 30 to 60 minutes, however long we can, actually, we should not sit here and visit all day. We can do what we want. We're <laughs> That's right. We own the world. Our six-year-old world. <laughs> That's right. right. But if you've got questions or you've got struggles with things, post it in the comments below. If you're listening on iTunes, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff, you can be able to catch the, the replay of the video by going to weclosenotes.tv. So if you want to click over that to go watch it, and, and enjoy Michelle's and my facial responses and us talking with our hands like we do. Yeah, like we do, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So what are some initial things that you like to give, have people do right off the bat to kind of kind of figure out where they were at, at uh, ground, ground zero, you know what I mean? Well, okay, so, so it's a really good question and there, there are kind of two, there are two separate pieces to it. And the first piece is I have them rank themselves. So studies show that when you go to the doctor and notwithstanding any like serious psychological issues that y- you have, but not, notwithstanding that, if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, please rate your general health, is it good, fair, uh, or really bad, people in- inherently know. You know what's going on with your body. And if there's something really serious, you might be in denial about it, but if you're, you've gotten yourself to the doctor and you rate yourself, people know. If they're like, there's something really wrong here, they're correct. We, we, we are the authority on ourselves. So first I have them rank themselves in four different areas. So there are four different areas of our lives, which if we are feeling balanced and healthy in those areas, then we're like, we're rocking the world. And they are, and I will speak quite slowly, I'm a fast talker. Um, they are your health, number one, your relationships, your uh, your cre- career and your creative expression, those two kind of go hand in hand. They can be two separate issues or they can be the same thing. And then your financial freedom. If any one of those areas is off kilter, then it like muddies up the whole game. So in other words, if everything's flying perfectly, but you're like in turmoil in your relationships, your life sucks, right? Or you're making more money than you ever have. You love your job and your relationships are great, but you can't get out of bed in the morning. No deal. So I have them go on a scale of one to five just because it shakes up their brain. I, it, it's hilarious. I'll be like, what would you say your health is on a scale of one to five? And somebody will go seven. And I'm like, well, you're knocking out of the park. And they're like, well, no. And I'm like, you weren't listening to the question. Then, mm-hmm. so, so I have them rank themselves because people, that's that kind of bring them, bringing them back down to the reality that they do need help. They go, oh, you know what? My life's really great. And they're like, two, two, two to and and it's it's fascinating to watch people go through that process well like they're at the end of this very beginning initial conversation and they're like crap oh crap 
what am I doing? So that's number one. And then I take them through them through a process. And this is when we're getting to know each other. This mm -hmm. is like before I've even decided if they're a good fit for what I do. You're getting um, to know them, getting to know all about them. And yeah. Tell us, please lay down on the couch. <laughs> I'm going to think some thoughts about you. No, um, so then the next piece is asking them, well, if it could be, and this is actually inviting your inner six-year-old out to play, if it could be any way you want it to be, what would it look like? Any way you want it to be. So there are no limitations. If you want to be a professional basketball player in this conversation, you get to be that, that professional basketball player. We work, we work with logistics later on. but but. In other words, so if I wake up in the morning and I'm like, you know, I sure hope I have a good day today. Yesterday was bad and I don't really like my job, but I sure, you know, I'd like to have a good day, but I don't have any idea how to create a good day. I don't even know what I want. And we've all, we've all dealt with those people, right? Those people that are like, I don't know, I just don't. I'm <laughs> that, that. Mwah, 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 mwah. I need one of those for my clients. There I got one for you. Next time I see you, I'm bringing it for you. <laughs> there are times I'm on the phone and I'm just like, you just, you don't even need me. You just need sound effects. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help it. <laughs> so, so you were saying. <laughs> As I was saying on this very important topic. I know, so, so then if you don't know what's going to make you happy, you're not going to get happy. That's, that is, that is the real, that is the key to it. What, what makes you, what lights you up? What would you love to have happen? And then we start the process of, all right, here's where you are. You're at a two and here's where you want to be at a 10 out of five. And let's now let's talk about really how to get there because, because if you don't know where you're going, then you're just going to wander around. Exactly. Well, we see that happen quite a bit. I think all, People, all coaches see that happen. A lot of people wandering around unless they have some sort of out, outlined or definite plan. Right. Cool. I think a lot of people just drift. I think, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're all friends. Napole with Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Yep. Outwitting the devil. We just drift a lot. Yeah. And anytime that you can outline what you want and no matter how crazy it seems, it's still better to have something versus nothing. Cause then you do that. Well, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm working towards today. Right. Right, right. Well, and the interesting thing is, so let's take that, let's take that NBA basketball player thing. It's so that that really is important that somebody comes to that because if you're like, well, we close notes here. I don't know about the NBA basketball player, but here's the, the really interesting thing. People don't really want what they think they want. Mm -hmm. That that person might come to me and go, I always wanted to be an NBA basketball player. And there may be two different things going on. They think they want that because they love playing basketball. It lights them up. It matters to them. And it's really meaningful for them. And that's legitimate. And they, they love that high energy, being in front of people. That person might start a, an intramural basketball team and do that as a hobby. And they, then they might really love teaching or speaking or, or some other thing. So what they, what they, they think they want that. And they're like, yeah, but I'm a 58-year-old man and I'm five foot five. But I can't. But I can't have what I want, and that's your inner six-year-old going. But I can't have what I want. But you can. You just. I mean, you could always play and be the twin towers, the the, the professional little person's basketball league. <laughs> <laughs> I love what I love that you just did is you're like, so we've got the short thing going. You could you could be a super short person on a short person team. That is really good of you, Scott. <laughs> you know, I have my moments. I have my moments. <laughs> We're gonna. <do> <laughs> How, how much do you see people struggling with patience? Because you talked about the six-year-old. Six-year-olds have no patience. No patience. And our, our buddy here, uh, Cedric, says, my biggest struggle right now is retaining patient or remaining patient while seeing others making deals. Patience has always been my struggle. My six-year-old has the same issues. Okay. All right. So this is, this is such, I actually taught this yesterday. This, um, it, it makes me sound super smart if I call it a rhizome system. Scott, do you know what a rhizome system is? I have no idea what a rhizome yeah. system is. Sounds something scientific and I didn't know. I know. <laughs> it's a root system. That's all it is. So, okay. So the, it's, it's a perfect question. And especially because we all have six-year-olds running the, our worlds and our six-year-old is like, 
I wanted to be famous yesterday or what, whatever our six year old wanted. So, so if you, have you ever seen a huge bamboo forest? Mm-hmm. They, they just, they're like clear up in the air. And if you've ever seen bamboo shoot up, it's amazing. Like from day to day, it'll like grow just exponentially. But what you don't know about that, um, the bamboo is that if you get a shoot, a bamboo shoot, and you plant it, and you give it, you, you give it great energy and nurture it, um, that first year, it's just going to grow like a half inch. And our, our inner six-year-old's going to want to walk up to it and kick that damn shoot over and go, stupid shoot. And I wasn't, I wasn't made to grow bamboo. And everybody else's bamboo, look, look how tall Scott's bamboo is, right? The second year, same thing. We did, let's say we didn't kick it over. We're like, okay, I'll do it again. And we water it and we nurture it. And it's perfect environment. Same thing. Third year, same thing. And by this time, your six-year-old's pissed. And you're like, your six-year-old's like, a pine trees are super way better. <laughs> stupid. This stu- I actually, I have a, how cool is this? I have a drawing of it that I did for a client the other day. Not a great drawing, but we'll do it anyway. Nice. Um, so, so anyway, so the, it's in the third year, the third year that bamboo shoots up in that magical, magnificent, majestic way. Right. And you're like, well, what the, what, what just happened there? And we think that no growth is happening. No growth is happening. No growth is happening. But what really is happening is the root system. So that first year, that's what we got. And in order for for that bamboo to be able to shoot up and withstand all of the winds and the weather that's going to happen, it's going to need a really strong root system in order to go. So if you're doing the thing, think, remember that I, I was talking about putting all in all the right ingredients. If, you've, if you're nurturing it, if you're working it, and you wake up every single day making the same commitment to success, and you're like, look, I've got a half an inch of growth. Are you effing kidding me? This is a year's work, and I've got a half inch growth. All you have to do is pull your, pull your uh, inner six-year-old into the world of the rhizome system and go, no, look, it's just going, growing down first. And then, you're, and then you get the quote-unquote overnight sensation. And then overnight, I was successful. Nope, you weren't. It, that, it, makes, it, it, makes, it's, that makes so much sense. It's, though, it's all about putting down a good foundation. We all got to build, you know, pay our dues making sure we're building a big business. Otherwise we're going to build a skyscraper on no foundation. It's just going to fall over. Right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And in order to, in order to deal with that impatience and we all have it, what, what we do is we invite our inner child out to play and go, okay, guess what we're doing today? We're, we're growing our roots. It's just, you know, it's an upside down world. Look at it upside down and it's, there's all sorts of growth going on and we get them interested. And I know it sounds, it sounds funny, but we distract them from the external evidence and get them super interested. Remember, do you remember like planting seeds in kindergarten? Mm-hmm. And you, you'd come in on Monday going, it was a sunny weekend and teacher said she would, she would water it. And, you know, and then you had the sprout and it was just like, oh, so we just have to distract the inner six-year-old. So did you hear that there, Cedric? You've got to play with your inner six-year-old and enjoy the sprouts, not the trees at this point. All mm-hmm. right. And, and Cedric's relatively new, I think less than a year. Dude, it takes a while. Trust me. It takes a while to get some stuff done. To, I did not get where I'm at today. It's, we're talking literally 14 years to get to where I'm going. And, and Damon yeah, yeah. Johns likes to say something. Overnight success took him eight years. So. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So do you remember that phase for you, Scott? Oh, yeah. Super frustrated. Uh, super frustrated. Kept pounding, but I also, there was something in me that said, listen, I know this is for the long term. I know I'm going through this. I just got to make it through this period. I don't know how long it lasts, but I was doing anything to scratch and claw to stay around during my, my lowest time. But I knew like I, I will not always be here. I will get through it. You know, uh, I have a big, big belief in, in self-faith that the good Lord doesn't give us anything that we can't handle. And uh, uh, I'm a, a cliche, you know, the whole point where, Steel's got to be pounded on by heat and beat to death to become a sword. That's the way I just have, we all have to go through trials and tribulations, heat and being pounded on and to get where we ultimately want to be. Otherwise, if we don't, we, we crack too easy. We fracture too easily if we, if we don't go through those things. You know what I mean? That's right. Well, and, and now you're an athlete, right? Ex-athlete, yes. 
<laughs> now, one's, one's, oh, oh, you, I'm going like, to get all coachy all over you. One's an athlete, always an athlete. That's, that's, true. that's, that's, that's true. just a thing. And so another way to distract your inner six-year-old is take what you're really good at, what you're already good at. And, and it can be anything and remind your inner six-year-old what it took to be good at what you, you know, whether it was getting a four-year college degree, you don't go to college the first day or even the first month and go, okay, there's the degree. You have to, you keep pushing away at it, pushing away at it, pushing away at it. Um, whatever you're good at when you apply the things that came easily to you in that area or that you are willing to come back to and go, yep, I'm going to run sprints again today, or yeah, I'm going to lift weights again today. And even though, even though from day to day, you don't see a difference over the years of you practicing that sport, you mastered it. And you, what you did, what you just told me is you applied the same principles that you applied to a successful sporting experience. You applied those to closing notes. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. I like, I know I'm gonna get beat down. I know I gotta start somewhere. I gotta do what I can to get in the game. I gotta get my toe in. I gotta do whatever I need to do. And I knew I was gonna get better every day. And it's, I think it's the biggest things that we, I always look at, okay, what did I do today that was better? I mean, when I walk out of the office here, I'm like, okay, where are we at? Did we do something productive today? Or are we working towards something in the long term? And, and we, you know, I've got maps up here and I have different goals. I don't have a lot of goals every year because I don't want to be watered down. You, know, you have one or two focuses for the most part, and then everything else fills in behind it. You know what I mean? Yeah, ab absolutely. And that, that makes all the difference. It's that, it's that dedication of showing up every single day and going, cause you had losses, right? You, oh, yeah. you, you were in football and you, you, your team probably got beaten pretty harshly sometimes. And you didn't, you didn't walk off the field going, well, I guess I'm not a football player. You were like, no, next time I'm going to do it better. And, and, and you evaluated what, what could I have done better? What did I do that was really good? And, and then move forward. And then it's the same rules. We apply the same rules of success to every single thing that we're doing from relationships to sports to business. Wow. That is huge. That is so huge. Now, do you see that? Uh, we got a comment here. I saw it pop up. Steph actually says, good morning to you. Good morning, uh, sunshine. She says, I imagine some people have to really dig in and peel through their day-to-day -day routines to let that notion of playful actions get traction and really explore what they would love to do or make happen. Sometimes it starts with little actions and rewrite their beliefs enough to do that. Is that correct? Oh my gosh. So people, believe it or not, some people, their, their like script from being six years old is a, a, it's about suffering. And they're like, you know what? Every day it's about suffering. I mean, you meet, you meet those people at the grocery store. How's your day going? You say to them, I can imagine you do this. You're like, Hey, oh, yeah. how are you? Right. And, and they're like, well, so far so good. Or surviving i'm still alive and and you know when i'm not I, i'm pretty much always the life coach but if i'm in a crank at all i'm like sucks to be you which i don't do very often and usually usually what i do is i invite their inner six-year-old out to play and so if it's like really bad if they're super cranky i'll be like if you could be doing anything at all right now it, you guys try this at the grocery store it's the funnest thing ever you'll you'll be like if you could do anything right now what would you be doing and there was one guy he was like oh, i'd be in a, i mean his like whole face changed and he was like all tatted up and wearing black and you know he just like he had a, a look going on and i was like if you could be doing anything at all today what would you be doing and he goes I'd be at my 77th Bruce Springsteen concert. And I'm like, have you been to Bruce Springsteen 76 times? And he's like, yeah. And then he starts telling me like all of these different places he's been. But you, but I like, so his, his, what he thought being adult, an adult was, he was like, I'm, I'm at work and I'm being a grown up and I'm doing my thing. That's how he was showing up suffering. I invited a six year old out and he, it was like, you can see people's like child come out and their faces glow and they get super excited and they'll tell you stuff. And it's the funnest thing. Well, what I do with my clients is I'm inviting them out all the time and I'm asking them questions about ideas that they have about their routines. Well, you know what? I can't do that because it means this. And I'll go, well, that's super interesting that, and I'll say it back to them and they're like, Oh crap, that's crazy thinking, isn't it? And I'll be like, who's, who's to judge you're crazy? I'm not gonna judge you crazy. I have my own crazy. But yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I love did that it. answer the question or did it I did, I think it totally didn't answer the question that Steph asked, definitely. So you're saying it's okay to be a little crazy. 
<laughs> so I'm saying it's so much more fun. Yes. <laughs> Number one deathbed regret is that people did what they thought they were supposed to do versus what they wanted. Let your crazy out. We all want to meet your crazy. We want to hang out with your crazy. Right. My, my, my crazy is really crazy. <laughs> Actually, what about you, Scott? It's probably not too far from the, the, the day to day in Scott, as some people would probably say. But um, yeah. today, I mentioned this earlier while we're getting ready to get run. Today's National Get Up Day. Like you be falling down and get up aspect of things. Isn't it just I'm, I'm doing a Facebook Live right after this on National Get Up Day. I love that. Good, good, good stuff. So let's say you've hit, you've hit a, a low spot. You've hit. You had something fail. You got slapped in the face. Uh, in our case, a deal didn't close or something bad happened to the deal. What are some steps that people can do to pull them their asses up or simple things that they can do to kind of get their energy refocused? You know, what are some re uh, recommendations or tips that you'd give people out there? So I just read a really interesting book. And at, in all honesty, I listen to it on audiobook. We live out in the middle of nowhere with the goats. And so I listen to audiobooks while I drive. I just ordered a hard copy of the book because it's so good. Um, it's by Dale Carnegie. So it's like totally antiquated. And um, it's called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, really, I, I expected it to be like, oh, okay. But it was, it was exceptional. And one of the things that, um, that he addresses in the book in regard to worry. So that's really what happened. We get, we get disappointed and we get, we get worried. We're like, oh my gosh, this disappointment happened. And what if all of the things that happen now are disappointing, right? Again, your six-year-old comes out. And so in, in, we all worry about things. We all get scared about things, but then we don't know what to do with it because, because I can't tell you if you have a note that, or a, a deal that falls through, I can't go, your, your deal didn't fall, fall through, Scott. That's not a problem. You just look at me and be like, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, yes, it did. So I actually did this with, some client, with a group call that I have the other day. It was really funny because I was like, okay, everybody write down something you're worried about. And they're like, you don't tell us to do that. You don't tell us to worry, on what, worry about what we're worried about. And I'm like, I'm not telling you to worry about what you're worried about. I'm telling you to write it down. So in the, deal, the case of a deal falling through, right? You've been working on a deal, your team's been on the deal, and it falls through. You would write down, what's the worst thing that can happen? Um, and so if you're, if you're like going super crazy, you could go, I'm not good at closing notes, and I, this is not a good business for me, and I lose my business, right? That, that, I, I don't think you think like that, but let's just say for the sake of this discussion, you did. Yeah. <clears throat> so coming to terms with what you're worried about is super powerful because when you get like, because we're always pushing it away. I don't want to think about that thing that scares me. I don't, you know, I've got this cough that I've had for years and what if it's cancer and, and we don't go to the doctor because it scares us and we're pushing away. So every single day we suffer just a little bit every time we cough. So if we write it down, okay, I've got this cough and I'm super scared about it. What's the worst thing that could happen? The worst thing is that it could be cancer. That, that's pretty serious. That's something to be worried about, right? Except for once you get it on paper, all of a sudden, the thing that's in the closet that we can't see is way scarier than anything. That mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we write it down, we go, okay, that, this is the first step. I'm worried that I might have cancer. The next step is, I, now I, I make peace with that. And I know, I know that sounds weird based on what I teach people to do, but it's just a process that we're exercising some demons, basically. All right. The worst thing that could be is that I could have cancer and I'm going to die. Well, okay. We all have a terminal disease called living where no one rides for free. And um, so I'm making peace with that. Okay. That would be super disappointing, but could I, could I handle that? Yeah. Could I survive it? No, but I could handle it. All right, so this is, and this is the third piece. So notice we're just taking things out to look at them and deal with them. The third piece is, what can I do right now to improve my circumstances? Obviously, the answer is pick up the damn phone and make the damn phone call to the damn doctor because worst case, you've already come to terms to a certain degree with worst case scenario, and now you're on the path of not being a victim anymore. You're, you're going to improve your situation. Bad stuff happens. It doesn't matter how good a life coach you have. Bad stuff is going to happen. But being able to manage those things and come at them from a place of power, it's so much more powerful to go, I could have cancer. That would suck. And pick up the phone call 
that's way more powerful than suffering for years with the cough where the doctor goes, oh, and by the way, because what is likely happening is, oh, and by the way, you have a touch of asthma and here's an inhaler, use it as needed and you don't, and then you don't suffer anymore. A week later, you're fine. So that's, that's the way to manage it. We're going to have disappointments, but when we put ourselves in a position of power versus victimization, and you think about it, people are always like, oh, to be a kid again, am I right? And people are like, it was so awesome. No, it was scary as hell and very disorienting. You know, you'd, <laughs> right? Wasn't it? Yes. You're walking around, you know, you'd be like out playing with your friends and you'd be like, life is awesome. I'm like, I got to be Starsky in our Starsky and Hutch game. And you go in the house and like grandma died or something. And you're like, wait a second, but I was happy. Did I make grandma die by being Starsky? I don't know. We don't have context for it. This is taking ourselves out of that victimization where we were. We are victimized as kids because it's just scary and hard and putting us in a position of how can I make it better? And that alone, even going to the doctor and them going, yeah, you know what? You do have an issue here. Let's get you on some medications. That feels better than constantly wondering what's happening. Yeah, I would, I, I have to agree. It's, it's, I guess the power comes from illuminating your fears, you know, right. and over and realizing that it's just a, it's just, it really doesn't exist, but you can, you, you have the power to act. Yes. You know, yes. Picking up the phone and calling the doctor to schedule a doctor's appointment for your cough, for your knee or whatever else might be ailing you. Is that correct? That's right. That's exactly right. And, and just, it, it's just turning on the light. So that six year old got scared about grandma dying because they weren't, they, they had no context for it. What we do is people get scared and they go back to that six-year-old. They go back and it just feels super scary again. And, that, and they get stuck there and understandably so. It's not like they're bad or dumb or anything. We all do it. But what it does is it goes, oh, wait a second. I have more context. I have more ability. I, I have control over not everything. No one does because it's part of the human experience, right? You don't, as, as for all the, of the years that you have in closing notes, you don't know what's going to happen every single day, no. but you have context and you go, you know what? The day that I thought the worst thing could happen and that it happened, I handled it. Mm -hmm. And, the, and you get back into that. And that's, that's actually inviting the adult out when you go, okay, this is what I'm afraid of. This is the worst case scenario. I make peace with that. How can I make it better? That how can I make it better is actually activating the inner adult. Did I get to psychology on you or are you, are we following? I think we're good. I think we're following it. That totally makes sense. Cause it's the whole point of we do fear the worst things. And then when it does happen, we realize that we've overcome it or it wasn't nearly as scary. Um, it, Most times 90% of the time it doesn't happen. Ex exactly. So going, when something's going wrong and jumping from where you're at to the worst possible thing, you know, it never makes it any better. It only right. makes the situation worse. It adds, takes good energy away. It takes, you know, the good energy away from what's going on with, with negative energy. It sucks the there. joy out of your life, right? Oh, you know, it's total joy sucker. Exactly. Total. Mm -hmm. Hang on a second here. <laughs> <laughs> so stop doing it. <laughs> let's, let's talk about something else to uh, uh, do a little transaction here because we talked about the underlying kind of code, the matrix to our lives that kind of helps us programming. And a lot of that dives into our self-talk, our inner dialogue with ourselves and our inner vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us would go get locked up in jail for domestic violence if we had to be judged by what we say to ourselves. Oh, and come on. We could, oh, seriously. We could get locked up for a lot of things if it was all up. If there, if there were head police. Yes. Or, wow. Like no. the minority report with Tom Cruise <laughs> busting in. <laughs> yeah. Every day. It would happen every day. Yeah, you know, I had I had a client who used to call it, um, he said, I'm going into da the dangerous neighborhoods of my mind, mm -hmm. where he's getting beaten up every day, and, and you keep going back there. So, so one of the most powerful tools that I teach, and it's a practice, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally, I'm giving everybody the tool now, and I'm also giving the disclaimer that it's a practice, just because I tell you this. You'll, you'll practice it and then you'll forget. It, it takes a lot of work to get better and better at this. Pay attention. Uh, sorry, what did you say? Uh, yeah. Pay attention. Exactly. Mic drop. <laughs> 
Yeah, we, we, what we do is we, we spiral into that, those dangerous neighborhoods in our minds and we think horrible things about ourselves. Well, you know, nobody's going to listen to me because, and you can fill in the blank with almost everything. Nobody's going to listen to me because I didn't work out today. Nobody's going to listen to me because, you know, I, we have all of these things and, and that self-talk. But when we're paying attention, what we, what we get to do is we get to hear how we're talking to ourselves and go, okay, and then this is really key. So if you don't like the way you talk to yourself, I, how many times have you said, I'm not going to talk to myself that way anymore, right? But, but we don't have a choice about thinking. We're always thinking. We're, that's a thing. However, if we say, I'm not going to talk like that anymore, we're still going to be thinking. So we get, have to first pay attention. Oh, I noticed that I don't talk very, you know, I don't say things to me that I, a helpful coach, because really you're your own life coach, right? Yep, yep. I don't, I'm not saying the things to me that um, help me perform at my peak. And then we, so, so then we notice that we're doing it. Oh, look, I'm, I'm doing that thing again. We stop, we go to a neutral zone, and then we go, how would I like to replace that? Because again, the, the thing where if, if I were your coach and I was like, your, your deal did not fall through today, you'd be like, okay, you're fired. That, <laughs> that was just a stupid thing to say. We also don't want that personal development thing where we go, I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, great. And our, our subconscious is like, liar. <laughs> you're full of crap. <laughs> right? So we get neutral and you said it, oh my gosh, Scott, you said it so well. You would, for all those, for all those 14 years of you going, okay, and you would walk off the metaphorical note field and you would have maybe gotten beaten that day. And what, but what you say to yourself is, what did I do well today? That's the first, that's the first thing. Cause if, if, if you're subconscious and again, I don't think you're this guy, but if your subconscious is like, wow, you're an idiot, Scott, that, wow, loser day, you blew it. Then you get to go, well, wait a second, what did I do well today? And you're like, you know what? In the past, I would have responded like this, but I did this really well today. What can I do better tomorrow? And you'll notice it's not a, what a loser day. You really blew it in this way. You go, what can I do better tomorrow? That's forward thinking versus this day that I don't have any control over now because it's over. Mm -hmm. And so we replace it. We, we choose in our, in our conscious moments, we choose what we're going to think instead. So we'll find ourselves going, wow, I'm such a loser. And then, and then we go, oh, I just noticed I'm doing that. And now I'm going to go, you know what? I actually do this thing really well. I'm going to do some more of that. Focusing so, on your strengths, minimizing your weaknesses. And, and, pay, and paying attention. attention to when you're doing it. That's huge. I, I, ch I challenge you, Scott. I'll try to. You know, I will definitely, I'll work on it. Uh, but it, that's very cute because I have a, a personal trainer that comes to the office here uh -huh. every day from noon to one. And we work out, he, he guides me on things. We're doing things now, some crazy stuff that I wouldn't have been able to do two and a half years ago. I mean, I would do it and I my back that's would awesome. be curled up on the ground, limping in a spasm. Well, I'm, I'm kickboxing. I'm learning how to kickbox right now. And somebody's like, oh, you know how to kickbox? And I'm like, no, I don't know how to kick. I go to kickboxing, but I'm like, <laughs> <Lately man." now. laughs> I'm like kicking stuff and almost falling over. But so, so I'm, I'm looking forward to mastering some things like you are mastering them now. Well, but the, the, the thing is too, <clears throat> is I understand the self-talk, but it's also, that's why I think it's good. Um, you, I think one of the most important things that I think people can do, especially when you are a, something that new at something is to try to remove, you have enough negative self-talk is to, get rid or remove yourself from bad influences around you, right? Trying to separate yourself with from friends or family oh or, or loved ones. Let's, let's talk a little about that. Cause I know we get that all the time with people here. Like my spouse is not supportive or my mom says, get a real job or, you know, I've spent, so I've burned bridges cause I've tried to do everything else and had not had success. And my wife or my family thinks it's just another one of those slip on a rope things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think I've heard Aaron um, talk about this with you even when I, I've heard of him over and over again. Um, I was really surprised the first time I heard him say it. 
Uh, but he was being interviewed on a on a podcast and or a radio show, and they said to him because of he does he helps small businesses. They said, "What's the number one piece of advice you would give to entrepreneurs out there?" And the first time he said it, I was like, "What did you just say?" And what he said was, "Don't listen to the people that love you." Mm. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, you can't say that!" And he's like, "No, you can't listen because people want to keep you." There are two things going on. People want to keep you safe. Your and and your wife, if your wife's like, "What are you doing again? What this is craziness?" She's like, "What are you doing?" She's feeling she's she's scared, right? And people are going to want you to stay small. If your mom says, if your mom says, "Hey, go get a real job," um, that's like she's got this construct because your mom's a six-year-old too. I'm sorry to tell you, it's super disappointing. But she's like, that's not how it works. Our, our people have to work hard. And really, if you figure out how to close notes, then you can slowly move to the point where it doesn't feel, A, it doesn't feel like work, and B, you can work less often, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so having those people around us, we, so Aaron, Aaron, not life coaching, which is generally don't listen to the people that love you because they're going to tell you. His, his dad, he has a really great relationship with his dad. His dad's a really good guy. But he was always like, oh my gosh, son, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and, you know, and it was out of love. So the people around us, there are a couple of things. You, you, we have different categories of people. When you've got friends who are like, Scott, don't work out today. Come drink beer with us all night. Those are the friends you're like, mm, you're not my people. And you, and you begin in a healthy way. And trust me, this is a very powerful thing too. You're not a good fit for them either. Mm-hmm. So when you talk, it's not a matter of, oh, these people aren't worthy of me because that's judgmental and not healthy, but going, you know what, this isn't, this isn't healthier. And they're, cause they're going to be uncomfortable around you when you're like, when you're like, things can be amazing and let's move and let's shake. And they're like, we just wanted to complain about our bosses tonight. You're making them uncomfortable and they're, and, and that's why they're trying to change you. So that's when you shift out the ones where you can't like go get rid of my mom going to get a new mom. That's, you can also change the relate, the nature. You can't necessarily change the relationship because your mom's your mom, but you can change the nature of your relationship by how you interact with her. That's huge. Definitely huge. Cause it's I, the thing about fr you know, friends and drinking beer. It's almost the, they're, they're trying to hold you back in that protective six year old playpen that they got used to you being in. And you don't want them enabling that inner bad talk, the inner failures when you're trying to get beyond them. Is that about and, and a lot, of, this isn't, uh, this, this is going to sound harsh. This isn't for everybody. So there are some people that are going to listen to that going, um, yeah, you know, maybe I want more than my friends do, but I'm not willing to get that uncomfortable. And that's okay. That's, everybody gets to choose how to do this, but know that you're making a decision. Know that you've decided you're, you're not willing to get yourself out of the norm. You're not willing to rise above what you've always known. And, but understand that you're still the driver at the wheel. You're still driving the car. So if you're, you, you, but you don't get it both ways. I, uh, I have a 96 year old granny and um, I have to take her to the doctor and she had, she was, she was 94 driving and oddly got into a pretty serious car accident. We don't, we don't know car malfunction. I'm sure that's what happened. But no judgment. Had, no judgment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when she said she needed to get a car, what I said to her in a very subtle way was, Oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> so anyway, so, so she, she had a compound fracture, both her tibia and her mm -hmm. fibula where it was like gnarly. And this is where we're like almost a year and a half out now. And it turns out that her foot hurts her a lot. <laughs> and she keeps going, I don't know why my foot hurts. And I'm like, because you broke it really badly. So I take her to the doctor just because you don't want to risk things with a 96-year-old. And I, I'm like, dude, it's just going to hurt. So we go to the doctor and the doctor says, okay, your foot's hurting. And we took some x-rays because they don't want to make any mistakes either. Turns out it's going to hurt because you've got a, a, like a rod and some bolts instead of bones working anymore. And, she, and they're like, so are you wearing your boot? And she's like, no, the boot really bothers me. And I loved this doctor. The doctor goes, you're 96. So you, we know you've made some great decisions to get you here. 
And this is how I feel about it. You can do what you want. If you don't like to wear that boot, don't wear your boot, but your foot's going to hurt. And that was it. That was, and it was really funny because the doctor didn't tell her to do it. And she's been wearing her boot every single day. <laughs> Interestingly, Interestingly, her foot doesn't hurt as much. We don't, we don't, we don't know what the connection is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so when we're looking at our lives and we're like, well, but I, but I'm still going to go out to beers with my buddies and, you know, and they don't like it when I talk personal development. And so we just talk about how their bosses don't just don't expect your foot not to hurt is all I'm saying. That is good stuff. I might be able to use that in my life a little bit. With some <laughs> now, Michelle, one of the great things that you have done over the last couple of years, definitely, and, and you did this re, uh, at the end of last year, you actually do some uh, amazing retreats too, correct? You got another one in the works as well? Yeah, we're, we're planning this fall's retreat. And uh, you, want, you want to hear? I know yeah. we're, we're plenty. It was really funny. So we had a yoga instructor um, come this last time and she was hilarious because what she loved. So we, we did yoga. Well, I should say the people that wanted to do yoga did yoga, but she, but she was like totally zen. She was all in and she, but we did breaking therapy too, where we broke dishes and stuff. And so everybody got to write something that they wanted to break away, break through. Right. And uh, she, she writes it and you can see her writing it and she walks up and it's her turn to break stuff. And she, she looks there, she's got her hand up like this and she goes, namaste bitches. And she throws it <laughs> This is my high for the whole weekend. <laughs> so, so we are planning an event. Um, it'll be on the West Coast. It'll be, hopefully we'll, we'll get September. We have some amazing weather in September here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, at the coast and you come and we teach. I, um, this, this, for this one that we had this last time, um, I had Aaron come teach and people, you know, ate that up with a spoon. Um, I'm teaching the whole weekend. Uh, had a chef, a private chef come in and remarkable food and gorgeous surroundings. So if anybody's interested in something like that, they can find me at um, Michelle at MichelleYoungCoaching.com. Or, and then your email is also Michelle at play at gmail.com, right? Yes. Oh yeah. Because I never, I've not worked a day in my life since, well, since uh, about 2007, I stopped working and I started playing. So I'm Michelle at play. Mm-hmm. You... What is, what's the big thing that recharges you, Michelle? What, what recharges you? I have two things. You, it was really pretty cool. So like I said, I had a client call me or text me this morning going, uh, can we talk? And uh, it was so great that that's what we did before this call because I love teaching. I love coaching. I can do it all day long and just like have all the energy in the world. And then I love painting. So Did we just lose her? You there, Michelle? Did your internet just go out? I think we lost her there, everybody. I know that she loves to paint. She actually has a calendar out from some of her watercolors that she did last year. Um, great, great energy. And I think it's a mic drop. <laughs> we lost her there. Don't know what I guess we had the internet go out here, everybody, really fast, which happens uh, occasionally, um, which is weird. Is she coming back? There she is. She's back. Oh, you're back. I don't know if it was your internet or I think it was my internet because it just rebooted here really fast. So, okay, good. good. So you were you were like for like 30 seconds we had you in this space. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm super expressive. So usually it'll be like I'll do a Facebook Live and the little thing is like. <laughs> So the last thing I heard, we talked about you love to paint, and I was talking about how you've actually put out a calendar of, of some of the paintings that you've done. You've mm -hmm. painted in different places when you guys are down in Mexico or Paris. And mm -hmm. like that. Is that a big recommendation for people? If they're struggling, they're having a rough time, just to kind of get a break away to go do something that recharges their batteries for a little bit? Hardcore. One of, one of the, it, it's really interesting. I learned it from Julia Cameron. She wrote a book called The Artist's Way and she calls them artist dates where once a week you go and you, it, first of all, cleaning your closet is not an artist date. Uh, grocery shopping, not an artist date. Um, but going by yourself, unplugging and just doing something that pleases you. So whatever that is. 
um, go to a movie by yourself, but it's by yourself. People don't know themselves, so they don't, so, and when they say, my spouse doesn't make me happy, it's because they don't even know what makes them happy and they're not caring for themselves. So I, I, am, I encourage Aaron, I'll be like, you need to go. You need to go do something. And usually he's buying coats, I'm going to be honest, or he'll go horseback riding or he'll do something like that. But he comes back and what, what we do is we come back to our own lives rejuvenated, where we come back going, yeah, I can do this. And, and, it's that, and that is why I paint. It, 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 and while I'm doing it, it's super zen and I can, I can focus on color theory and then I come back and I can, believe it or not, I can apply what I did in my painting to my marriage, my family, to my coaching. It's, it's a, it feels like a waste of time and what it is, is it's giving you a recharge time. Totally agree with that. It's good. Keeps you on your toes. Keeps you rock and rolling. It keeps that six-year-old inside of you ready to play with other people's six-year-olds, right? You there? Yep. Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Good, good stuff. Well, hey, Michelle, I want to say thank you for taking time on your busy schedule to jump on with us and have a little bit of fun. Share some great insights with those that are listening out there on the iTunes and Stitcher and all of our podcast platforms, along with those that are watching and joined us on the Facebook Lives. I want to thank everybody for, for listening. Uh, thanks for the great comments. Uh, once again, you can find Michelle at michelleyoungcoaching.com. Is that correct? Yep, michelleyoungcoaching.com. Awesome. So you guys take care. Have a great, great get up day. All right. Yeah, and, uh, get up. Get up, get up. And we'll see you guys. I guess we'll see you in a, in a few weeks, I think, actually. Or uh, we'll, we'll be on San Diego, actually, for Aaron's event. You'll be there as well, too. So we look forward to hanging out with you. So. Scott, thank you so much. It's been a real, it's a great way to start my day. Same here, darling. Same here. So thank you so much. All right. We'll see you later, Michelle. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, everybody. Hey, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Note Closer Show. Go out, make something happen, and listen to what Michelle said if you're struggling. Hey, step away, go play with your six year old self, uh, but also give yourself time to build the roots in your, in your business, whatever that is, whatever you're struggling, give your time to build the root system so you can grow much taller in the long term. So go out, make something happen, everybody. And we will see you all at the top, everybody.